Hello and welcome back to Post Finum. Wait, hold up. And I also really enjoy these sorts of mods, so I decided to make my own. It's called Post Finum. Post Finum. Post Finum. Post Finum. So as I was saying, welcome back to Post Finum. In the previous episode, of course, we uh, managed to win the fourth Punic War. And I didn't really realize that it was the fourth Punic War until I was actually editing it post. Um, because, well, it's the first time we fought Carthage in this campaign. And, well, all three Punic Wars did happen in this uh, timeline's alternate history. So, yeah, fourth Punic War, and we won through the power of... Grayskull, and also uh, really good troops and the ability to build a navy when needed. Uh, I do think it is very fun that we won in the same way that Rome did. In the middle of a war, losing navally, and just saying, nah, screw it, I'm, I'm just gonna make a navy then. So if we've now beaten the coalition, the plan is going to be to take on all of the little guys between me and owning the entirety of Italy. And this is a great start to that. By fighting Ancona, we can also get to war with Pescara and also Benveneto and also Carthalis. We'll annex them all either into ourselves or into our vassals. And at this point, I'm thinking we can say that war exhaustion, not war exhaustion, aggressive expansion it's just not a thing I need to worry about anymore. And with the final peace deal, I will take everything and be very happy as I now have a direct land connection from the very tip of Italy to the very bottom in Sicily. Uh, the only nations left then, of course, are Rome, Naples, Thalassora, who apparently used to be the ones that owned all of um, Sicily, which is very interesting. Um, and then, of course, Carthaloon, who is now the ones that own the rest of Sicily. Truces are... I mean, I could just straight up attack Rome right now, so I think maybe that's exactly what we're going to do. This is going to be the time when Rome comes home. It's funny, they think joining a coalition against me is going to do anything, but they're the only ones in it. They're alone. They're dead. We will take Rome now. This is not the first time we have besieged Rome, but this will be the last time we besiege Rome. Rome has fallen, and now we march on and defeat their army. Fighting in the mountains. Ah, it's all over. Rome is defeated. It's a 1k stack that managed to get... Oh no, I got him. Nice. Uh, of course, I do have some rebels. They do. Have, they did have some friends. Ravia joined. Uh, the, the Jews of uh, Necrot joined. But at the end of the day, we're here purely for Rome itself, and I can take it all. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Actually, what would that do to my aggressive expansion? It's it's fine. See, clearly, it's fine. Nations have started to join, like Lombardia, Middenwalds, uh, but. At the end of the day, we're going to take this, and then we're going to sit back and do nothing while our aggressive expansion drips away, and I integrate and assimilate and regurgitate and potentially even uh, masticate upon my new territories. And that's not a dirty word. You should look it up. Rome's only ally has just been beaten on the fields of Zetia, or the mountains of Zetia. We can piece them out. I'll take a little bit of money, why not? But that does mean that Rome are at a 100% occupied, and it is time for them to revel in being Romana once more. Kind of an anticlimactic war, considering the importance of this event. But we have finished another mission. Our southern campaign marks the expansion of our influence, bringing new lands and peoples into the fold. I got 20 power projection and permanent claims on South Italy. I mean, I feel like the fact that we just took Rome deserves a little bit more than that. Like, give me, give me an event, saying what a monumentous occasion it is, maybe give me a triumph, something like that. Uh, I suppose I kind of got that there, but 
Either way, let's take that. Asserting Romana supremacy, we stand as the unchallenged guardians of our people and heritage. Uh, we get, until the end of the game, a missionary, a missionary strength, and some yearly prestige. Very nice. So now what we need to do is take five more provinces in southern Italy. Um, which is like one, two, three, four, five. It's all but three. <laughs> all but three provinces. Oh, sorry. All but two provinces, even. Because I own this as well. Yeah, so... No, it is all but three. One, two, three, four, five. No, it is all but two. Never mind. I can also convert to Romana, or I could start making cores here. Which will... I think we'll make cores. I'm a little bit low on admin points. We're a little bit overextended. But at the same time, what do you, what do you expect me to do? Release Rome as a vassal? It's crazy talk. Some people have started to get a little bit less than pleased with my exploits, though. Of course, we had the Lombardians and some of the Germans joining a coalition, but um, now we have Macedonia and Ostholm also joining. So we've had the coalition of the, I guess, um, southwest in the Mediterranean. Now we're going to have the coalition of the northeast. Should be fun. Uh, good luck getting through the forts. I mean, I suppose this is only hills, but still, I mean, I wouldn't want to fight there. The dastardly bastards have gone and done it. We've we've had we've had one Punic War, and now we'll have a I, I don't know what the the Roman Macedonian Wars. I know that fought mostly around here. Legion versus Sarissa. I'm sure I can find some art for thumbnail for that. Either way, we are once again at war. We are once again calling upon mercenary armies with which to defend me. These guys have 103 ships, though, so once again, we may be somewhat, slightly, potentially, a little bit navally outnumbered. But I don't care. I'm going to win. This may be the first time Macedonian and Romana troops have actually fought. Uh, they're coming in with a 1-2. I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Um, we're currently fighting our, um, with a 5-6, so let them. But I do think, even so, we have this in the bag, even with 100,000 extra troops coming in. Uh, it is just a hill fort, but it is a pretty good hill fort, all things considered. And we'll fight... Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll just win. We'll just, we're just going to win. That's the point. When we roll these... Oh, look at those numbers. Beautiful. So we were forced to retreat because I didn't want to start losing my cannons. But dealing upwards of... What is that? 35,000 casualties for losing 12 of my own. I, I think that those numbers are kind of fine. Uh, we are also at war with Punicum and Lombardy, which is going to make it a little bit difficult in that regard. However, if you think about it, there's a mountain fort, there's a mountain fort, there's a mountain fort, and this is the only issue, right? Is this one entrance into a hill fort. Uh, but also what I'm thinking is, uh, this province, if we dev this to 20 and build a fort here... Which is going to require a little bit of loanage, but that's fine. If we build a fort here, hopefully it'll be done in time, and delete the Verona fort, which is weak anyway. Now, if they come through, as soon as they get to Dravisum, if they manage to siege this, either they move to uh, Sorenza, which will be a fortified crossing, and I hopefully will have naval dominance, or they will have to go to a mountain fort. I think this is fine. The people of Istria know that they are forfeit. We have re-engaged the enemy, and while they have lots of reinforcements, potentially, they have decided against sending them in, for whatever reason. We could attack into the woods, but I don't really fancy being overextended here, so we shan't. 
This time the Macedonians are trying to siege a, a mountain fort. Uh, I'm not sure how well this is going to go for them. Oh. Hmm. We have found the, uh, the Macedonian navy, and it is very strong, apparently. I did not see that battle going on. That's unfortunate. But this battle is... I mean, it's just no contest. They may have discipline. However... We have basically everything else to the point of just no contest. Those numbers don't lie. Those numbers certainly don't lie. I feel like maybe I bought too many mercenaries. They're just not necessary. What I'm going to do is scorch the province, though. So that they, if they do want to reinforce it uh, later on in another battle, it's going to take a bit longer. Also going to scorch these two provinces so that it takes them a little bit longer if they do try and siege Friuli and I want to take that battle. It takes them a little bit longer to run away. That's the plan. I'm going to go and hunt the Macedonian fleet. My own is smaller, for sure, uh, but I have 35 galleys and 5 heavies. They have 33 galleys and 7 heavies. They're about as closely matched as is possible to get, and I like my four maneuver more than their one maneuver. I, I do think we have a shot of beating them, if we can catch them. But that is also not exactly guaranteed. Oh, they're trying to capture, catch it with really slow ships. Oh. Please die before I get there. Well, that's unfortunate. Either way, uh, we have now got 60 combat width versus 45. That, I mean, we should be able to win. Everything that I know about naval combat tells me that I should have this. We have more morale than them as well. Maybe they have extra modifiers that I'm not aware of. I know they do have durability on their ships, as they have quality ideas, and I do not. Uh, oh, they started losing ships before we did. We lost a ship as well. So did they. Okay, they're losing. They're losing. We're winning this battle. Yes. Oh, the turnaround. Once again, we show our naval prowess. Our value. Our worth. Our dominance of the sea. And now their navy is blockaded. It is unable to take part in the war. And if I wanted to, I could build maybe a couple of troops transport them to Corfu and have it be a uh, less imposing navy after another masterful defeat. That's unfortunate for our uniforms. A masterful ruse. We have trapped the enemy upon our mountain fort and now we shall defeat them before they manage to get any resupply and recuperation. This should be a very disasterful battle for them. Won't be a stack wipe, but it will be very painful. So far, we've been winning the vast majority of the battles to a quite frightening degree. And at the moment, they will peace out. Um, though I'm not sure if there's actually anything I want to take from this. Uh, we have killed probably about double what they've killed. More than double. So I'm pretty happy with that. Attrition casualties seem pretty even. I think I will just peace out at this point. Uh, there is nothing I want from this war. I mean, I could take Corfu. I could really start messing with Macedonia. But I just I just don't feel the need. I really don't feel the need. Um, let's just take Corfu as a, uh, a victory island. Lots of money to pay off loans. War reparations. And we will leave it at that. We don't need to rub the boot in. Victory is ours. Once again, we show our dominance. And I will pour it and be happy. Rome has been converted. It is now properly Romana. Which means I've also unlocked another blessing for my faith. Either I can get some missionary strength, use scepticism, or what I'm going to go for, manpower and true faith. Right now, we have 173 maximum manpower. But now, give it a monthly tick, and we will see that we are up to 194, which is kind of incredible and probably 
the highest in the world. It is indeed. Or the highest in the known world. Of course, I don't know what China's up to right now. Ooh, I'll be informed. That is very cool. Not a fan of the flag, but cool. The truce that I have with the coalition has just ended. And now any, you know, reasonable, rational, and, you know, decidedly unwitting ruler of this land would decide, you know, we shouldn't push it. They've declared two coalition wars on us. But I'm... I'm not them. And I need to take what is rightfully mine. Carthaloon, are you less than 50%? We need to know this. No, you're not even less than 100. Damn it. Uh, I'm going to attack you, and then Naples can be... There we go. This is the war. We are going back to war once again. I need to unify Italy. It's quite important. So that's what we're going to do. Though I may have messed up here, and I do have potential of being stacked. I don't think I won't get stack wiped here, right? I've got, I've got 0.5 morale, and they've got, you know... More. It's it's gonna be fine. Yeah, see, I'm gonna stack wipe them. There's a difference. Although maybe I should have been a little bit more careful. Time to win Italy. Why is Armenia fighting Egypt in the Bay of Napoli? What? Well, that's a nice looking Armenia and a scary looking Egypt, but. That's not exactly where I was expecting to see a naval fight from you guys. Either way. Though they are 101% here, I be Oh, they're now only 50 uh, 99. I do believe because we have War Score Cost versus other religions, it isn't actually going to be 100%. Oh, it is. Okay, never mind then. Um, I guess that already takes it into account then, huh? Well, interesting. So here we go. Naples, you are being forced out of this war. You are going to give me your land. Thalassora, give me your land, give me your money. And now I might need to peace out some other people before you're allowed to give me yours as well. But it's we're working on that. Illyria is out of the war. They're also going to transfer me their trade power. Now all of these guys can come back to my land. And we just need to wait until either Numidia feels like they don't want to be blockaded anymore. Which is uh, probably not going to be for a while. Or until Carthaloon wants to, you know, admit defeat and unconditionally surrender to me. But that's going to take a while as well. It's finally over, and I don't know what date it was the last time that I said it was going to take a long time, but, um, well, now it's 83, so we're going to peace out in Namidia. Wait until my diplomat gets back, and we're going to peace out uh, Carthaloon. And with the piecing out of Carthaloon, we have completed Anne Michonne. Our conquest of Meridia is a strategic move to extend our influence and solidify our position in the Mediterranean. That'll give us 100 admin, 100 dip. Which is nice, because it'll pay for the court. Oh, I nailed it. I nailed it. 100% overextension. Perfectly. And mission-wise, what I need to do is enforce religious unity edict on them. I mean, I can do that very easily. Reviving the Latin language, we reconnect with our Roman roots, fostering a linguistic renaissance across Italia. The like institution spread and cost of advisors with the ruler's culture until the end of the game. Determined to rid our lands of Punic influence, we embark on a campaign to reaffirm our cultural and political dominance. So I gain some new guys uh, and 30 years of the glorious reformation. But what we really want is to be proclaimed Imperator Italia. 
As Imperator Italia, we assert our ultimate authority, leading our people towards a new era of power and prosperity. So, I become an empire. I gain two uh, mil points. What am I currently? A three? That's okay. I'll take that. Um, until the death of my current ruler, I get prestige and core creation cost, and claims on Carthage, Gaul, and Illyria. Imperator Italia. And I can also proclaim Roman glory. So, let me just check here. I want me to have three tier three monuments. I don't really care about that. Uh, complete religious or humanist or have converted 100 provinces and have... Oh, that's an absolute or revolutionary zeal, so this is late game stuff. Not interested. From the coin ledge, have low inflation or gain... And gain 14 admin a month. Can I do that easily? I could probably do that. There. And then we want to... Where am I going? Admin. Do that. Modernizing our coinage, we infuse with symbols of our past. Merging tradition with economic advancement. So I lose 180 admin until the end of the game. I get national taxes and interest per annum. And then here, you want me to have marketplaces. I hate building marketplaces. I don't care. Um, that's quite nice as bonuses, but I uh, don't care. And now we will re proclaim Roman glory. In the ancient lands of Italia, the cradle of Romcart peoples, a grand unification unfolds. Unification of disparate realms reforges a once mighty nation that has been long forgotten by many. May Rome usher in an era of innovation, cultural renaissance, and self-determined glory, illuminating a future rich with its own storied past. Facts. We are Rome, and I will absolutely take new traditions and ambitions. Beautiful. The flag is improved, and also we have new ideas, and these ideas are... Let's just say they slap real hard. Manpower plus 33%, discipline plus 5%. National unrest minus 2. Advisor cost minus 10%, diplomatic reputation plus 2. 10% infantry compatibility, 20% stability cost modifier, 10% goods produced modifier, 5% admin efficiency, 25 whole percent core creation cost and years of services minus 5, and finally construction cost minus 10%, production efficiency plus 20%. This is an improvement over what we had. It's no Seleucia, it's also no Sparta, I'll show you that at some point. But these ideas are really, really nice. I will absolutely enjoy them. And of course, we have to go through and do all of our um, stuff. Though we do have a mission to fulfill first. Um, firstly, we did lose the entire Italian mission tree, but I don't care. Mobilizing to unite the fragmented north, we aim to bring these lands under a single banner, creating a more cohesive and stronger Italia. Uh, every own province in northern Italia that doesn't form Romana will receive missionary strength. I, well, they all do anyway. Our vision turns southward with the strategic goal of unifying these rich and diverse lands under our enlightened rule. Again, and stability. Recognizing the power of bureaucracy, we invest in administrative reforms to streamline governance and enhance the empire's operational efficiency. So, every own province that has paper with 10 production gains 2 production and local goods produced. I am going to save that until I make sure everything uh, can fulfill it. Investing in the vineyard cultivation, we aim to transform our lands into a hub of vi viticulture. Never heard of that word before. Producing wines that are renowned across the world. Uh, up to six provinces producing wine will gain a farm estate. That's kind of dope. We'll take that immediately. And yes, a new mission tree. I don't believe it expands anymore, but that is pretty cool. I am enjoying that. The Roman Republic is a burgeoning Mediterranean power characterized by its republican form of government. Rome's influence extends across the Italian peninsula with an expanding economy and a formidable military. She fell almost two millennia ago and has been reborn like a phoenix from the ashes. You can select this government reform, blah, 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 blah. 
we enable Parliament. I honestly hate Parliament, I'm not gonna lie. For our tier two, I think I'm gonna go with political dynasties, because it just makes sense. You know, Rome was, you know, pretty famous for having its own political dynasties, you know, the uh, you had the Julii, the Brutii, etc. Um, yes, we will be taking those. Our enemies see what an absolute juggernaut and mighty beast Rome is. They've started leaving the coalition that they started forming again. They're scared, and they should be, because Rome is a powerhouse. And I think it only fitting for the man who formed or reforged or claimed the mantle that was once lost. I think it is only fitting that he be the one to have a biography written about him. The time has come to commission a work detailing the deeds achieved in the reign of our current proconsul. A host of potential writers come forward to offer their services, but it will be down to the closest circle of advisors to decide which one will be chosen. Full price for the... Oh my god, that's so expensive. But it's fine. It'll be done in 180 to 270 days. This is a work dedicated to the life and deeds of Proconsul Procatus I, the bold, great warrior and military leader. Now a middle-aged man, the time has come to put to parchment the stories of his reign and all the feats achieved within it. Known for being a warmonger, he contributed greatly to the management and perpetuation of the realm. At this time, Picatus is maidenless. Aided by such magnificent advisers as Tertius Maximus, Picatus has access to the finest suitors of Rome, yet our country is still lacking a suitable heir. Funny, funny one should say that, uh, because we are a republic, and it is in fact time for an election. Unfortunately, uh, his heir, his relative, is not very good. Uh, but we will, um, I guess, if, I don't know, we're making trade ideas, we're down on trade, yeah, let's go diplomatic candidate. And we get a 142, of course, you know, that's, uh, it's, 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 it is what it is. Pacatus is no more. It's time for a new console. This is honestly exceptionally funny to me, um... We've just had an alliance offer from the Persians. Uh, okay. Why not? I'm sure nothing could possibly go wrong with this. This is this is an alliance that has no hard feelings whatsoever involved. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, you know. Can't, how, what could possibly go wrong? Let's be honest. And it has started. In Conium, Roman culture is blossoming as citizens eagerly adopt this new national identity, weaving the rich tapestry of Roman customs, language, and art into the very fabric of their daily lives. So here we are in Conium. Is this going to be my first province, or did Rome actually itself get converted? No, it's still Umbri. Um, is this maybe then going to be my first Roman province? Quite delightful. Uh, I think it is my primary culture? It is. Uh, and it is, I think it is actually the only one that we have. At some point, all of it will turn into our primary culture. But, you know, it, for right now, we just have one. And I guess I'm going to give you a seat in Parliament for being the first. Congratulations. At this point, uh, we have a couple of things to do, right? Um, looking at the mission tree, a lot of it is conquest, right? Gallic ambitions, they want me to take the coastline of Gaul, or the south part of France. Uh, this wants me to go into Carthage. Over here, you want me to go into Egypt. Go even further into Egypt. Uh, make Carthage cool again. I don't know. Uh, gets a town hall, I guess, is it. Um, this one wants me to go further into Iberia. Then moving further on, it wants me to have 200 provinces in one of those areas. You know, all the places that I have permanent claims. After that, it wants me to have ownage of every single province that we have gotten claims on via mission. So all of Gaul, all of Iberia, all of North Africa, Egypt, 
uh, Anatolia, Greece, Illyria. And you could do this by uh, by vassals as well, because every single province uh, in this area is owned by subjects, and it'll be integrated for free. So that's kind of cool. That's really, really cool. Um, but I don't foresee this series being that exceptionally long. Uh, I do want to play uh, more of this, but I don't particularly think it's going to be interesting where I'm just... I'm going to attack this person now. Here's a war. Here's me sitting around for 20 years while the aggressive expansion drips away. Here's another war to take more land. And for that reason, I'm actually going to call this series here. This is a very fun campaign to do. And I do recommend it heavily. I do find the Italia start to be a lot more fun, actually, than the Roma start. Though they're both kind of cool. But definitely, I, I do recommend this one highly. And Forming Rome is also something I really enjoy. But I couldn't leave it off without first annexing my vassals and showing the true glory of Rome and its name spread out across the Italian peninsula. I love it. Fantastic. Thank you all so very much for watching. And the response to this series has been way more than I expected. So thank you very much for that. Uh, there will be more in the future. Let me know in the comment section below what uh, tags you have had a lot of fun with and you would like to see me try. There is, of course, going to be the 1.1 update coming out very soon, which, well, it does some things, but one thing I'm very much looking at is potentially uh, a little guy that starts over here. So let me know if you guys would be interested in that. Uh, but until then, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed playing it. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.